Now, would you look at this box? Now, I know the first thing you're going to say is, oh my gosh, what a plain, boring box. But if I showed you a photo of what the real steel came in, you'll understand why I'm saying right now that to date, this could possibly be the most accurate representation of a real steel ever on this channel. Now that's a bold statement, even down to the box. Now, just in case you're wondering, how is a small box like this coming in a massive box like that? Well, <laughs> do you know I do this little series called Airsoft on a Budget? Well, no, that's not what this one is today. This is not Airsoft on a Budget today. But what I have in there is Airsoft on a Budget, and I'll be opening this in another video. So, Back to this Airsoft pistol, which is a nod to the Call of Duty World War II game because it is a 1911. But I'm more interested now in this being an absolute banger of a replica, especially for you reenactors and you Airsofters that like things just that little bit more authentic. Now, if you look on the back of the box, it gives you a bit more spec and of course, it's got all the official branding there. So this is blessed by Colt, okay? So it's authorized, it's licensed, thanks to Cybergun. Let's get it open. So in the box, you've got your usual Cybergun papers and leaflets and whatnots. Let's see what accessories we get with it first before we get to the actual pistol itself. You get your bag of free BBs, and in this bag, you get a threaded adapter, which is cool. So that means you can put a suppressor on there, nice. And an Allen key. Why do we need this? Well, it's CO2. Now, before I even think about taking this beauty to the range, um, please just take in the accuracy of this thing that beautiful parkerized gray effect that it has. The stamped official cult trades. This thing really is a thing of beauty. So before I go any further and go through the basic features that you would expect to find on a 1911 A1, have a look at these trades, have a look at this beautiful representation of the 1911 A1 in my little montage. Now what I've done here for this segment of the video is I've actually reduced the lighting in the studio a lot because it was glaring too much on this and I wanted to show you a true representation of the sort of parkerized grey finish that this pistol has. And as you saw there in the montage, this bad boy really does have some authentic trades all over it. So. Let's take a closer look. The patented dates. April 1897. September 1902. December 1905. February 1911. August 1913. And look, you have further trades you got the Colt logo right there. Hartford, Connecticut, USA. 
absolutely loving the little stamps, the little logos, the little letters here, there and everywhere. I'm not saying every single one of those are authentic to the real steel, but boy does this look realistic. I just need to say this again, the studio lighting is making this pistol look lighter than it actually is. It's actually a bit darker than what you're seeing on screen and it's gorgeous. Right now, brace yourselves. In the moment, I'm going to turn this pistol around and there's going to be some horrible stickers, but don't worry, I'll get rid. Now I invite you to take a look at the top of the pistol, just by the rear sight. You would expect these sort of stickers on an airsoft pistol. In fact, you know what? Let's get rid of them right now. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Much better. Okay, so let's keep looking at all these uh, authentic markings on this beauty of a 1911A1. M1911 A1 US Army United States property and a serial number and then if you look just there on the front of the trigger guard <clears throat> 69 and if we move along to the rear just behind the grip you have the letter F what's that all about I don't believe that's got anything to do with the real steel I think it's something to do with the fact that it is an airsoft gun. But what I do know, so far, I've not seen it on any real steel. Hit the comment section below if you know better. Now to the untrained eye, this looks like a real firearm. To us airsofters that know an airsoft pistol when you see one, that's the big giveaway at the front, yeah? The tiny little barrel. <laughs> but yeah, gorgeous. Excellent for reenactments, as I mentioned before. Now, I believe something's missing from there. Should it have 0.45 ACP on there? Anywho, go on. Just take it in, just a little bit more. I'm just going to be quiet for a few seconds. Oh, sorry, I'm going to break my silence straight away. Look at that barrel from this angle right there. Looks awesome. It's a threaded barrel. Right, so before we take it to the range, let's go through the features that you would expect to have on a 1911A1. You've got your basic sights on the top right there. Let's give you a quick sight picture. You have your slide lock and release, thumb safety, Grip safety, beaver tail, mag release, lanyard point, low profile trigger, the only non-metal parts, the grips. You have the checkered effect on the mainspring housing. You have the same on the grips and thumb safety, the trigger the mag release and slide release, the recoil spring plug and also on the hammer spur. Let's just have a quick test of the slide racking back. Nice. Now as we're talking about mag release, here's your mag and your CO2. Right, to get this in, you grab your supplied Allen key Loosen it up. You don't need to take it all the way out. You just need it down enough so you can get your cartridge in. And then you just tighten it back up. Now there are two ways that you can fill this mag. You can either use a speed loader and fill it from the lips right there. But I do know a lot of air softers that don't like using speed loaders because they say after a period of time, it will just wear this out at the top, the lips of the mag. The other way you can fill this up is, you see that follower right there? You just grab that, pull it down to the bottom, turn it around and drop your BBs in one by one there and fill the mag that way. 
Now the only drawback of doing it this way where you pull that follower down to the bottom is that it doesn't lock down there. So you've literally got to hold on to it whilst trying to get the BBs in. And that can be a bit fiddly at times. Do you know, is it possible to fall in love with an airsoft pistol? Because I think I just have. But before I declare my undying love, <laughs> let's do this. Let's take it to the range. Ooh, let's see and hear that again. That was delicious. Safety first. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to make sure this beauty actually works. So let me just take it off safe. Let's take a single shot down the bottom of the target just to actually just to feel what the kick is like because I hear it's got a mean kick on it. Here we go. Oh my gosh. That is serious. That has got a neat kick on it. I mean, it is CO2, so I wouldn't expect anything less, but that has got a nice kick. Yes. Right, so let's do an accuracy test. I'm gonna go to my usual distance, and then we're gonna chrono this. Let's do this. Okay, we're gonna keep it nice and simple. We're gonna aim for the number one target right there, and that's how small that target is. Okay, I'm liking the results right there. That is pretty accurate. You're not gonna get a massive range on this particular pistol, but from the distance I was and the size of that target, bring it in, that is pretty decent. One shot just outside, all the rest, pretty much on that number one spot right there, right on the edge. There's your closest to the bullseye right there. I'm happy with that. Let's chrono this bad boy. Now this is CO2. I'm expecting it to run a little too hot for CQB. But you know, whatever country you order this pistol from, I'm pretty sure it will be appropriate for your FPS limits at gameplay sites, not legal limits, because this is well within the legal limit of most countries. But I'm expecting it to be the higher end of the 300s. Let's do this. Now there you go, like I said, <laughs> it shoots pretty hot. So, you know, we started off at a whopping, what was it, 380 odd, 388 or something. Then it gradually started to drop down. Let's keep going. Now there you go, look. I decided to keep shooting. As you see, the pressure gradually begins to drop and we're getting more suitable readings there for CQB play. Now, wouldn't it just be rude if I didn't empty the mag and show you this beast locking back? I think there's only a couple more shots out of this. So here we go. Ha, one. Excellent, and look at that nice lock back. You know what, let me do this piece some justice. Let me refill the mag and then empty it into this so you can see it in all its glory. Right, I've only put about 12 or 13 rounds in this mag. It does take up to about 17. Okay, let's empty this. And let's see if it locks back successfully. Let's do this. Should we go a little faster? Nice. And as you heard there, the snappiness 
of each shot started to drop a little as the CO2 begins to run out, but it's still successfully locked back. People, I'm telling you now, out of all my 1911s, and I've got a few, this is now my favorite 1911. The fully licensed Colt M 1911 A1 Parkerized Grey. If you like what you saw and you think you might want to pick yourself up one of these, check the video description below. I have a list of airsoft retailers that do list this and have it currently available for order at the time of making this video. Usually I don't say prices because prices are subject to change and of course I have many different people watching from many different countries so the prices will be totally different worldwide. But if I just give you an idea now, in the USA, we're looking at just over $100, some places up to about $130. In the UK, in and around £150, that's £150. And Canada and other countries, I would suggest, would have similar prices to the USA. In Europe, other than the UK, about €120. Euros. And let's just clarify something very quickly. Don't mix this up with the previous version of this Colt 1911. There is a 100th anniversary one, which has sort of white lettering on the slide. That is not the same as this one. That one's been out for years. This one I've showed you today came out in 2017 and there's no white lettering on it. And the actual trademarks are a bit more accurate than the previous one. Now, some sites are listing this one that I've just shown you as the 100th anniversary model. Technically, no, the one that's the 100th anniversary model is in a nice colorful box with the USA flag. The version I've shown you today is in a more realistic brown box. However, a lot of sites don't call the one I've just reviewed today the 100th anniversary model. They call it the fully licensed Cybergun KWC Colt M1911 A1 Parkerized Grey. And I've even seen one site calling it the Cybergun Marushan. Hmm. Don't you just love Airsoft? <laughs> I do. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the views, all the comments, even the negative ones. The fact is, you still clicked on my video and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Catch you next time.